G'day guys. Geometry nodes is going to be a really powerful feature in Blender going forwards. This is particularly the case for world building, where you can use geometry nodes to scatter trees, rocks, or even grass throughout your scene. However, when used excessively, it can slow viewport navigation and increase render times. In this video, I'll show our Geometry Nodes node group that can mitigate these problems by automatically clipping objects that are outside of the camera's field of view. It is designed for Blender 2.92 and works with the current beta. I anticipate that this kind of functionality will be built into Geometry Nodes in a future version of Blender. The node group file can be downloaded from the link in the video description. If you open that file, there is some information and a sample scene. This is the node group that I've created. It's a bit complex. Well, it was hard for me to get it working, but I'll explain in detail later how it works. To use the node group, you will need to append this file into your own Blender project. Here's an example of a scene with many objects scattered using geometry nodes. At any time, the camera is only pointing in one direction, but there are thousands of objects outside of the side of the view of the camera or even behind the camera. So we'll add the node group, so to file append and choose the file that I've provided. Then go into node tree and choose camera FOV clip. Then go to the geometry nodes window. Now we want to add the node group once the final position of any points is determined. And so I'm going to add it just before this point instance node. So do shift a group camera FOV clip and we'll add it there. Now there's a few things we have to configure on here, primarily around the, the camera configuration. So we'll add an object info node and Select the camera and plug in the oops, plug in the location and rotation of the camera. Now the next two settings are the sensor size and focal length. So select your camera, go to the camera properties, and the focal length in this case is 50 millimeters and the sensor size is 36. So if you need to, then you adjust those settings here. The last setting, being the object size factor, is a threshold for determining when objects should be clipped once they go outside of the camera view. So in this case, you can see from the scene that we're already clipping most of the objects from the scene, but there's still quite a lot of objects on either side of the camera view. The easiest way to configure this value is to do trial and error. So we can adjust it here and work out a setting which looks fairly close. Now generally you don't want to do an exact setting for that. You want the, the threshold to be sometimes quite large. So consider that you might have trees on either side of the, the camera view that are cast in shadows, or they might be reflected in the scene, or there could even be illumination from off the, the side of the camera view. So it'll the configuration will vary depending on how you your scene is structured. Now that the node configuration is done, the distribution of objects is restricted by the camera view. 
So if you move the camera or rotate the camera, then the number of objects and the position of those objects changes within the scene. At this point, there's about three and a half thousand objects. If I go back to the node group and mute this node, then all the original objects in the scene return, and as you can see, there's over 25,000. With this configuration, viewport navigation is a bit sluggish. Turning on the clipping removes all the excess objects and makes the performance much better. Of course, this technique can be coupled with other performance optimizations, such as using lower detailed objects in the distance. Okay, in this next part of the video, I'll explain how the node group actually works. So the first part of the node group is to reset the camera position. So essentially it's moving the camera to the origin and then resetting the rotation of the camera. But of course, we're not doing it for the camera itself. We're performing that transformation for the geometry node scene. So we can visualize this by parenting the plane to the camera. Now if we perform the same transformation, so resetting the location and resetting the rotation, then you can see how the, the scene is transformed. So the reason to get it into this position is because when we visualize the, the camera at this location, it's easy to tell mathematically what objects are behind the camera. So in this case, any object that has a Z value above zero. But we can do better than that. So if you consider the, the camera is essentially, the camera view is bounded by four clipping planes and these stretch to infinity. So what we want to do is find objects that are on you know, the outside of one of those clipping planes. For simplicity, I'm only performing that clipping on the left and right planes. This covers most use cases, but if you've got a scene where for, you, know, you want to do a barrel roll through a forest or something like that, then you might want to do clipping on the top and bottom planes as well. In this view, what we want to do first is to rotate this plane up along the, the z equals zero axis. And this is achieved by rotating the scene once again by the angle of the field of view divided by two. So this angle subtracted from 90 degrees to give the, the angle here. And then performing that rotation will align the plane with there where it's easy to exclude any objects above the plane and essentially outside of that side of the, you know, the right hand side of the camera view. Okay, the next transformation is to rotate this plane to once again be along that z equals zero axis. And so once we've got in this position, it's easy to exclude any objects above the that point. So keep in mind though that we don't want to clip 
when z equals zero exactly. Because if we were to do that, then this monkey would be excluded from the camera view, even though it's partially visible. So instead, my approach is to move the clipping planes up by the object scale factor, and then that will ensure that any object that's partially visible will not be removed from the, the camera view. Of course, this is applied to both planes, and so there's a, a margin of error on either side. The nice thing about this approach is it works for both foreground and distant objects. The same scale factor applies for both. Okay, that's all great in theory, but let's see how it's actually working in the node group. So, the starting point is the blue frame here, just taking the, the geometry input set of points and the camera location. Now start by inverting the location by subtracting it from zero. And then that's the transformation that I apply to all the points in the scene. But before I do the transformation, it's important to back up the current position. And so this is saving the current position into a, another variable, another attribute. So the geometry comes out of there into this green frame, and the input to that frame is also the camera rotation. And so here I invert the rotation. And what's important to consider here is that the camera rotation, in my case, is using XYZ Euler. And so I've found that the reverse rotation has to be performed in a specific order. I've got to rot rotate by Z, Y, then X. And in order to perform those separate rotations, I have to split out the, the rotation components and create separate vectors for each component. So now that the rotation and location have been reversed, and so the, the camera is effectively at the, the origin, we can perform the actual clipping. And this requires some maths to calculate those angles, which basically came from Wikipedia. So the angle calculated here is the angle required to rotate the right clipping plane to z equals zero. And then that geometry passes through a vector dot product and then I compare against the object scale factor. And then based on that comparison, I then have two sets of geometry, the, the objects within the field of view and the objects that are outside. And so we're only keeping the objects that are within that field of view. The same process happens for clipping on the left plane. So once again, there's a, another rotation to align that left clipping plane with the z equals zero. And then there's a vector dot product attribute comparison and then the separation of the points to the ones that were inside the clipping plane and the ones that are outside which are discarded. Finally, the original position of the points is restored, and then that's fed into the output. So try this out in your scenes and tell me how you go. Appreciate any feedback or suggestions in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.